Emma. I found a whisker right when I started filming. Hooray! Gotta put that in my whisker jar. It is prize season and three prizes that I'm interested in have been announced as of today. Today is March 10th. So today the International Booker Prize long list was announced on Tuesday, the women's long list was announced, and previously, the Republic of Consciousness book prize long list was announced. So, what I'm gonna do is just turn it this way so that I can put the books here. Yes. I think both the women's prize and the International Booker Prize had a lot of books that people weren't expecting. Some of them pretty exciting sounding for me, some of them not so much. So rather than go through every list here and rather than tell you all the lists, I'm going to just link the long list to these three prizes down below. So the Republic of Consciousness deals with small and indie press books. So all their books are smaller indie press releases. The Women's Prize deals with female authors. So these are authors in translation or English speaking authors, but all women authors. And the International Booker Prize is all translated to English works. So these are works from any country by any type of author, but that were originally written in another language and then translated to English. All three of these prizes I had heard about last year and some of them I followed a little more closely than others. I was really interested in reading the winner for the International Booker Prize in 2021, which is At Night All Blood is Black, and I was interested in reading the winner for the Women's Prize, which is Piranesi. Piranesi is on my 21 books I found out about in 2021, but I want to read in 2022 list, so I hope to be getting to that sometime this year. The Republic of Consciousness I don't know who won the 2021 prize, but quite a few of the booktubers that I love follow this prize, so I'm interested in reading more of these books. Some of the books that I'm really interested in reading from the Republic of Consciousness Prize is Somebody Loves You by Mona Arshi. I've seen quite a few booktubers read this book, but I haven't heard very many good things about it actually, and I'm not really sure what it's about at all, except that I know that I really love the cover. You can see that this is a beautiful book cover. The next book that I'm interested in reading off of this book prize is Our Lady of the Nile by Scholastique. Muka Surga. I think this is a historical fiction set around the time of the Rwandan genocide and has something to do with kind of leading up to that event. I'm interested in reading more kind of surrounding that time period, both in nonfiction and in fiction. This is a fiction book. The next book I'd like to read I've heard quite a few good things about and it's put out by Fitzcarraldo, which I've never read any of their published works, but I know people like Bob the Booker and Katie Books really likes all of that publisher's works, or at least finds them to be an interesting selection for publication. There are quite a few off of there that I'm interested in reading, but this one is Dark Neighborhoods by Vanessa Aguimeze, and this is a mystery thriller, I think. Another book that I heard about from Bob the Booker is Sterling Carrot Gold by Isabel Wadener. I actually don't know what this one is about really, except that it sounds pretty wacky and there's some magical realism in it, I think. And then lastly, off the Republic of Consciousness list, I would like to read Happy Stories Mostly by Norman Erickson Passeribu. This was translated by Tiffany Zhao, and this is a collection of interrelated short stories. Short stories aren't usually my thing, but getting into interrelated short stories or connected short stories does sound like a fun read to me. Next, the Women's Prize. The books that I'm interested in are Build Your House Around My Body by Violet Coopersmith. This, I think, is two, two women in a dual timeline, their shared experiences and their different experiences. And this is another one that I just really love the cover and I just want to read because of the cover, basically. I really would like to read Creature of Passage by Moroa Yeldig. I'm sure I didn't pronounce that correctly. Uh, this is about a cab driver in the 90s 
1970s who works in Washington, D.C., and I think it has to do with kind of the immigrant experience and different experiences that they have in their cab. I do want to read Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead. I recently found out that this is on one of the audio sites where I get free audiobooks, so I hope to read this before the prize is announced. The book that I'm most interested in from the Women's Prize long list is Salt Lick by Lala Allison. This is a future cli-fi cow narrative and it sounds amazing. The Bread the Devil Need by Lisa Allen Augustini sounds like an interesting read. I feel like someone I saw compared it to How the One-Armed Woman Sweeps Her House, which I didn't read, but I hear is quite a brutal tale. The Bread the Devil Need is about a woman and her abusive marriage and how she kind of comes into her own and figures out her life. The Exhibitionist by Charlotte Mendelssohn sounds really interesting. This seems like a family drama about artists and art curators, and I'm interested in reading more about visual arts in fiction. I really liked A Month in the Country, which I read last year, which was about an art restorer. So I think that's an interesting theme to have in a fiction novel. Obviously this book isn't mostly going to be about the art world necessarily. I would assume it's more about the family dynamic, but I think how the art world and how art and artists fit into that will be interesting to read about. I am interested in reading The Book of Form and Emptiness by Ruth Azeki. This has been well received by booktubers that I've watched and it's about a talking book or about inanimate objects that speak to one young boy and it reminds me a lot of Wonderfalls, that short-lived TV show by the creator of Hannibal. I really like that show and it was an interesting look at how if inanimate objects talked to you, what you would experience. I also like the inanimate object personalities in Skinny Legs and All by Tom Robbins. So this seems like it would be a really interesting read for me, but it is like over 600 pages or something, so I don't know when I would possibly get to this. I'm also interested in other works by Ruth Azeki, but all her books seem to be quite long, so who knows if I'll actually get to read it. Another author that is pretty well known on booktube and in the book community is Alif Sharak, and she's written quite a few books that I've also been interested in but never read. Her book for the Women's Prize is The Island of Missing Trees, and again, this is a story told by a tree. So I'm not sure if the tree actually talks, but it's a story told from the tree's perspective. There's a lot of books on the Women Prize that have this kind of supernatural, spiritual kind of aspect to them, which I think is an interesting choice, especially after we've come off the pandemic and the cruel realities of the world. But it's also interesting because Piranesi is a little bit in that vein too. So is that a response to Piranesi winning last year, which Piranesi was I feel like kind of a long shot for them, so maybe this is kind of a reaction to that. I'm super interested in reading The Sentence by Louise Erdrich. The Sentence is a little bit meta in that it takes place in a bookshop that really exists and Louise Erdrich owns and runs, but it's about a fictional character who works there and the ghost of a past regular. I haven't read any Louise Erdrich yet, but I did recently get Love Medicine by her, and I'm super excited to read some of her work. I'll definitely read this before I read the sentence, but I'm going to keep my eye out for that one as well. Last off the women's book prize list that I want to read is this one, Sky Day by Leonie Ross. This is on my 21 books I found out about in 2021 and I want to read in 2022 list and I'm really excited for this one. This is another quite long book. I think it's like 600 pages, but everyone I've heard, well not everyone, but most of the people that I've heard that have read this book in its entirety said that it's a breeze to get through and it's really compelling and interesting and also quite uplifting, which I 
feel like is not the trend for many of these books, so it would be interesting to read a story that maybe doesn't have a happy ending, but maybe doesn't have a devastating ending. The last prize list is the International Booker, and there's quite a few off of this list that I'm interested in as well. Paradise by Fernanda Melchar and translated by Sophie Hughes is a, another book that is a Fitzcarraldo edition and I've heard good things about this but it is about two well-off depressed teenagers so I am interested in it but I'm not sure it's really going to be for me. Love in the Big City by Sang Young Park translated by Anton Hur is one that I've been interested in. I can't remember who I first saw talk about this book but it is a young gay coming of age story about a young gay man living in the city and just the day-to-day -day life I think of what that experience is. It sounds really interesting and I love the cover as well. Happy Stories Mostly, which I already talked about, that interconnected short story collection is also on this list. Elena Knows, which is by Claudia Pinheiro and translated by Francis Riddle, is one that I saw Jen Campbell talk about because this was nominated for a prize, I think, last year. This is about a woman whose daughter is killed. She thinks that there's more that needs to be investigated about her daughter's death, so she travels around trying to find out what really happened. The mother has disabilities that require her to take medicine at very specific times and do very specific things throughout the day. So as she's investigating her daughter's death, she's also grappling with all the things that she has to do just to keep herself healthy for the day. Phenotipa by Paolo Scott and Daniel Hahn is a book that I'm like on the cuff about. This one is about two biracial brothers and how they go about their lives and it does sound interesting but there's something about it that's keeping me from really really wanting to read it. A New Name is one that I'd never heard of. It's by John Foss and translated by Damien Seals. This is about two artists living in two different areas going through two different lives of trying trials and tribulations but that have the same name. This is part of a series and I don't really know anything about that series or anything about that book other than what I just said but it does sound interesting. The Books of Jacob by Olga Tokarczyk is one that is super super long and I know a lot of booktubers really enjoy it but I don't think that I want to read a book that long, but I do really want to read a different one of Olga Tokarczyk's books, which is Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead. This is a semi-murder mystery sort of slow thriller book about an older woman who discovers a mystery and tries to figure it out. I'm really interested in reading this one. It is on my Goodreads want to read list so I've been keeping my eye out for it and hopefully I'll find it soon. And lastly from the International Booker Prize one of the books that I'm interested in is Cursed Bunny. Again I've heard really good things about this collection of short stories. These are not necessarily interconnected but they all do follow themes of capitalism and patriarchy and it sounds quite gruesome and dystopian so I'm interested to read that. That one is by Bora Chung and also translated by Anton Herr. Those are the 21, 22 books that are off of three different prizes that I'm really interested in reading hopefully this year in 2022 and maybe even some of them before those prizes are announced. I don't have any of those books and since I don't buy new books I'll have to keep my eye out for them in little free libraries and library sales and used bookstores and hope that I get them soon. Have you read any of these books? Do you follow book prizes? Are are there any other book prizes that you're excited for their announcement videos or that you plan on reading anything from their long or short lists? I am very excited to see the Booker Prize and the National Prize when those eventually come out and the Agatha Prize. I don't know when the Agatha Prize comes out but I'd also like to see what the Agatha Prize is this year. So maybe we'll have another video like this when those come out. Let me know in the comments below what you plan on reading or what you have read from any of these long lists and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much. Bye!